What's up? I'm Jordi Angela. Shemaine Man B Dot. And it's the kid Gowie. And this is the checkup. B Dot and Gowie, how are y'all doing today? I'm I'm good, man. <laughs> I got a hey, we we got our boy Gowie on the show, man, to start to start the new year. You feel me? Even though it ain't the new year yet, it's a new show, and we're going to make it happen, man. Gal, you Gucci, brother. Appreciate you for joining us, man. Welcome to the oh, checkup. Yeah, of course. Once, like, once again, I want to say I appreciate y'all for letting me join. Um, I'm feeling fine, though. You know, this is a new thing. I get to join, talk about basketball with two of my favorite people. You feel me? So <laughs> it's going to be lit. Yes, sir. All right. What's good, Joy? How, how, was, your, how was your holidays, man? <sighs> How was Everything your Christmas? was going well, okay? Everything was going well. And to be honest, I felt like this year was going too well for me, honestly. And it was too good to be true because <laughs> the L's that I that my life took tonight was insane. I I, I feel like the devil just attacked me. That's, that's how I feel. I feel like the devil attacked me and slapped me right in my face. <laughs> oh man, talk to me, Joy. What's good? What we what we pop it off? What what what? Why, what you so upset about? What's what's going well, on? Well, I don't know where to start. I don't know if I should start with the Wizards losing to the Chicago Bulls mm. with Russ and Riley Bill both active, or the fact that Miami got blown out by forty points by the freaking Bucks. I don't know which one was worse. I think the Russ one hit a little bit different, though. I'm not gonna lie. Hit what? Me. I'm surprised by that because Miami getting blown up by 40 against a team that, you know, you really bigged up last year. It was all – I don't trust my – I don't trust the Bucks <laughs> against Miami. So now they blew them out by 40 in the regular season. I figured you'd be more hurt by that one. 40-piece with a side of fries, ranch, extra crispy. <laughs> God, Joy, that ain't no more karma. Remember you was talking all that junk. I know. Miami this, Miami that. If Giannis leave, come to us. Look at it, 33, 30, 31 three-pointers on the head. Giannis had nine points, six assists, four and, rebounds, and, three for nine. And, and you know it's bad when his brother started giving you buckets. Like his brother got in the game and started giving. I said, oh, what is going on? Yeah. The babe. whole family eat. Listen, mm. but like I said, the, the rest wouldn't hit different to me because just seeing Russ Go 0 and 4, which has never happened in his career, and then to the Bulls. Like, Let's, come on, we gotta stop. We gotta stop this. And he played good. He played good. Bradley Bill had a first. He had a rough first half. Came out second half. Did did a little bit better. But the 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 team shot two for 19 before the fourth quarter from three, and they had 19 turnovers by the freaking fourth quarter. How you nah. feeling? How how you feeling about that team next door, guy? How you feeling about them, brother? Well, uh, you know, I, I think that the Washington Wizards, I don't know what's going on with them. Um, I actually picked them to win tonight. Uh, I had them. I was like, you know, there's no way that they blow a 17-point lead against the Chicago Bulls and, you know, Russell Westbrook comes back and it happens again. So I'm thinking in my mind, Westbrook comes back. He helps them get over that hump. They get the W. Well, you know, the Bulls started pulling away in that fourth quarter, and I was like, hold on. The lead got – up to uh i think it was maybe 17 on their end and i was like all right yeah this this is getting crazy so the problems are deep rooted for the wizards it's not just bradley bill or russell westbrook or not having that third star or whatever it's just the wizards <laughs> i don't know what it is at this point oh man they the way they looking they might need gilbert arenas to come out that uh, locker room with some, <laughs> with, with some guns and some adidas on you feel me <laughs> Oh man, but it's they early though. Man. It's early, man. Um, I, 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 I mean, it's a rough start, but they are in the East, and the East has gotten way deeper this year. But yes. I feel they'll, they'll, they'll get it together, man. You, y'all, y'all know, like, like I said, man, y'all know how the East rock, bro. You feel me? Like you only got to win. And which, what is it? Seventy-one games they playing this year. Yeah. So you might end it. Yeah. 72 so in the east you might only got to win 27 games you might get a five you <laughs> might get a, you might get a six seed you feel me nah that's a fact though the, the east i ain't gonna say it's easy but you know it's kind of light on that side <laughs> boy listen so um but i mean i think they get it together man russ russ and um and bradley man it, it, it's a new start um it's a new feel so um, I think that I think them I think them guys will figure it out, man. I ain't I ain't I ain't worried about it all. But let's yes. go to talk about them Rockets, though. That, yes. So yes. hey, yes. Speaking of I, new starts, speaking who, of new starts, where, where, where's James going, Gowie? In your opinion, James is staying his behind right here in Houston, man. I ain't trying to hear none of that. All these trade packages they try and put up, we don't need them. 
Um, James is going to have to suck it up, bro. Two years left on the contract. We at least getting one of those years. And the only way we're going to offload him is if James really on some extra stuff. Like, he really trying to get out there. He start faking injuries, you know, uh, uh, not going to practice or whatever. So if he get on that type of time, you have no choice but to trade him. But if he's cooperating, he's playing in games, um, he's not really causing a ruckus. Because right now, it's more off the court stuff. It's not even on the court things. They had the whole incident when he threw the ball in uh, Jay Sean Tate's direction. But mm-hmm. it's like, bro, Michael Jordan punched teammates in the face. So I ain't trying to hear none of that about no leadership and none of that. So I want James to stay in Houston. Um, and I just feel like that's the best thing for all parties. Because if he goes somewhere, it's just a new field. You got to keep starting fresh no matter where you go. Mm-hmm. What would you, what'd you think, Joy? What you talking about? <sighs> well... Not gonna lie, Miami clearly needs him right now. But listen, I'm not gonna no, do it because hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, wait, 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 could actually work in Miami, but I still, I, I'm not gonna lie. I would, I would. At first, at first, the whole Tyler Hero thing was okay. Like, what are we talking about this Tyler Hero? But I, I don't. I, James Harden, Tyler Hero. Uh, as long she's, as we keep, as she's long stumbling, as y'all. we can keep Duncan Robinson, I don't care anymore. Okay, I feel like he is more. Um, he he's harder to come by than Tyler Hero is. So. Give us James Harden. You can have uh, Iguodala, Olenek. I don't freaking know. The the fact that Golden State is gonna give Draymond. Come on, we can get. They can get more from for, from us. It's crazy uh, how you just right, uh, bro. Uh. But I'm gonna, I Gal, I'm toxic, gonna let you. I get it. I'm gonna let you say what you gotta say, Gal, before I before I chime in. All right, uh, I got I gotta tap into my Stephen A. back for this one because I feel mm-hmm. disrespected. Talk to me. First and foremost, Joy D'Angelo, she's one of my good friends. And um, <laughs> I listened to her talk about James Harden disrespectfully. Basically said that he's not a star. Basically said that he wouldn't be good in Miami. He's not a part of the culture. He's and not a dog. Man, we're talking about a man who could score 44 after leaving the strip club. And she said he's not a dog. <laughs> like, ladies and gentlemen, please understand that Joy D'Angelo is not a fan of James Harden. And she... I'm and. Not. With him being my favorite player, I hear all of the, the slander and the nonsense and all the jokes here and there. So now to hear her go on record and say that she actually wants James Harden in Miami, this is like Christmas. Like, you know, you talking about the new year, new year, new me. Like, this is a new joy. We didn't even hit 2021 yet. But go ahead, Dot. I'll let you speak on it. <laughs> well, well, I'm going to have to tap into my Kendrick Perkins. Well, uh, oh, my God. Don't well, make, because well, series, well, don't forget to say well, that. Make well, sure you si- breathe hard. <laughs> well, well, listen, uh, Joy and uh, and Galway, it I I have a, a a real reliable source that 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 says James Harden will be traded to the Philadelphia 76ers. And 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 listen, listen to me when I say. Let me explain. The, the reason I say that this this reliable source is a it's a it's a good friend of mine and is very good friends with James. Cause you know I. I text KD and I said, yo, KD, I know we ain't cool like we used to, but is James coming in? He just read it. So I think, and I 100%, I don't want to say 100, but 92%, if a trade happens, Jameson Williamson Harden is going to the Philadelphia 76ers. I don't know who don't give up, but I know the Rockets want a young player in return. Mark my words. That's what I'm saying right now. That's a fact. That's what we need. That's what we need. I, I like, and I, I, I ain't gonna lie, kind of. I mean, shoot, you know, Daryl and James, they homies. I heard they still be. I heard they got. I heard they got a clubhouse chat group chat together. I, uh, I, 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 now, now, I, that, I got, I got a question for you. Talk to me. If the Rockets were to trade James Harden for Ben Simmons, mm-hmm. do you change Ben Simmons' position or do you let him uh, switch at point with John Wall? Because me personally, I feel like this is the opportunity to move Ben Simmons to power forward. I feel like that's where he's supposed to be. Um, obviously, he can orchestrate, you know, the offense, but I feel like he should play more of a uh, Al Horford, Bam out of bio type of role to where he can defend and he can facilitate. But this standing at the top of the key when you can't shoot, ah, I don't know how you feel about that. 
see the thing about that is, man, I don't. Um, Ben's been a pulling guard his whole life, so here for, for him to be able to switch it up and like go to that like you know LeBron role where he let shorter or he let you know Rondo handle the ball and he goes down the post and do his thing. I don't think that's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. What I do like about the Ben Simmons trade, I think it'll be one of the most scariest and more, most prolific fast break team in the league, bro. With those guys, with the Rockets, you add Ben, you got John, you got Daniel House. That's a lot House. of size, too. That's a lot of size. Yeah, oh, and they and they run. Yeah. Them boys run. So I think that'll be – I, I want to see that work out. I wouldn't mind seeing James um, – um, excuse me, Ben Simmons and um, John Wall. Like that fast break going to be stupid, bro. You feel me? Yeah. It's going to be scary, bro. And even Doc Rivers said it, man. Doc Rivers said the other day that he had Rondo. He won a championship with Rondo, you know? And Rondo wasn't Rondo wasn't a jump shooter. Rondo scored a triple double, thirty one points, hella assists, hella rebounds in the playoffs on all layups and floaters. You feel me? True. If Ben Simmons looks to attack more, I think he I, I think he'll be perfectly fine. And that jump shot will come. You know, you can't go into the game like, all right, I got to at least take three jump shots, or I got to at least take six mid range shots. That's gonna mess up your game. Just go into the game doing what you're doing, but be more aggressive scoring. I know you like passing. I know you like, you know, getting everybody else involved in the game. But nah, brother, you six ten, and you supposed to be, you supposed to be the fresh prince of LeBron. Yeah, you feel me? Exactly. Like, but yeah, man. But I'm I hundred percent agree with you, guy. In terms of switching that position up, like that would really help. But at the end of the day, he's still under twenty five, young guy, and he's gonna do what he feels comfortable with, and that's with the ball in his hand and 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 running that wing and handling that ball. Feel that, feel that. So, we just, you know, I'm not sure, you know, how y'all feel about this, but we just saw Kelly Oubre make his first three tonight. It was, oh, it was, you know, a a great, like a, what they call it? A landmark in history for the NBA. (laughs) Um, So, what do y'all think about Kelly Oubre with Golden State? Do y'all think he fits there? Do y'all think he, like, like, why do y'all think, his game hasn't translated like it did in the in in, in Washington and Phoenix. Um, honestly, bro, uh, Warriors have to change their whole offense. The whole, you know, I agree. The whole freelance and I don't want to say freelance, but the whole, you know, Steph coming off down screens, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the the when I say freelance, I mean the free movement. A lot of cuts, a lot of pick and rolls. They're gonna have to change it, man, because I don't think Steph is gonna be able to. That's not Steph's game, bro. Coming coming off that pick and roll 24-7, you know? Right. He's not James Harden 2.0. You feel me? Steph likes those down screens. He likes coming off those stagger screens. He likes running that wing. I think when Draymond comes back, and if they do not trade Kelly or, you know, Wiggins, that'll help tremendously because Draymond is the point guard for that team. Facts. Draymond is the guy that brings the ball up the court and is able to find those guys. If it's a cut, if it's a down screen, if it's a backdoor cut for a layup, Draymond's able to find him. And Kelly's doing more of a, you know, one-on-one, let me get mine type role. And not saying Kelly can't do that, but Kelly's more comfortable. I feel I feel Kelly's more productive. He's more effectiveness when he's playing that slasher Kyle Kuzma role. You yeah, know? yeah, you know definitely. I mean? So yeah. um, I think I think Steve Kerr, like I said, it's a new team. Just like how we said, if they do add Harden, it's going to be uh, starting new over and over. It's a new team. They're just going to have to – they'll figure it out. And I think Steve Kerr will be able to figure it out. But, yeah, man, Kelly's got to attack. He has to attack early. Get to that free throw line. Don't settle for those jump shots. And it also goes for Wiggins. You know, Wiggins, he hasn't been playing – that well, he's shooting a lot, which I'm, I don't mind. I like an aggressive Wiggins, but I like it to the basket, man. Chill on them jump shots. Get to the basket. Get to that free throw line. Go and get a, get a flow in the game and then go from there. Well, so you hit it right on the nose, uh, pretty much basically saying that Golden State has to change their entire offense because we're still trying to see them enforce this uh, Clay Thompson, Splash Brothers offense. And it's like, bro, you don't have that those specialists anymore. Like, you don't have a KD. You don't have a Clay Thompson. Right now, you have Andrew Wiggins, Kelly Oubre. No shade to them, but they're not those guys. Um, and basically, to piggyback off what you were saying again, uh, Steph Curry coming off of down screens and stuff like that, I do not like the idea of Steph Curry playing off ball with this team. Like, I understand he's a selfless player. You know, everybody bigs him up on his off-ball play. But it's like, bro, 
when you look at the team that you have, the ball has to be in your hand. You have to create for those guys because they they can get their own shot, but it's going to be forced. So the one thing I can say about this team is that they're aggressive. Kelly Oubre, he's aggressive. Uh, Andrew Wiggins, he's been aggressive. Like you said, he's been taking a lot of shots because he's been actually going to the cup. He's been taking the jumper. So he's fearless, but they not hitting. He had a solid night tonight. Um, but all around, I just feel like Kelly Oubre in this system – I think it just may not be the system that for him as of right now until Steve Kerr switches it up. Uh, right now, Ubre's in this thing where he's trying to dunk every damn thing. Like he's trying to get his Michael Jordan on Space Jam. If he can jump from half court, he would. So that's kind of how I see it. He's shooting four percent from the three point line, not point four, point zero four. Uh, that's pathetic. It, yeah, and it's just like I'm a I like Kelly Oubre, so seeing him struggle like this um, isn't fulfilling for me. And I kind of feel like that he does need a new look. So if Golden State were to make a trade, I would be all for taking a Kelly Oubre because he has toughness. He he puts that effort on the uh, defensive end. But offensively, he's not going to be this spot-up shooter guy that they're trying to turn him into. Uh, before One one thing before Joy goes, uh, Gowie, they do play at the, at the highest pace in the league. Yeah. So that's one thing, you know, that is going something for their favor. They do. You know, that Dan and Tony Ball, get it up, get it get it up. So, you know, hopefully they figure it out, man. But in terms of the Rockets, like you were saying, hard out of here, bro. Nah, you know? sure, bro. And, on, and, yeah, and I mean, I, I, and, yeah. and, 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 and I don't mean to change the subject. Only reason why I say that and for it to piggyback on the Golden State is because they're looking for a third team. Mm-hmm. So you never know. They still may be able, the Rockets still may be able to get Ben, you know, if they add a third team. But it's just, yeah, 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 yeah. James gone, Gowie. I'm sorry. But Damn, Joy, bro. Joy, do what you <laughs> go ahead. Hey. No, but I wonder, I wonder if that three teams that if that three team trade is still in progress since uh Spencer did what he got hurt. It can't be Brooklyn. Because because no, because I know Houston and Brooklyn, they were back in trade talks with the third team. Mm-hmm. But does the does the does the deal fall apart now that Spencer's hurt? And I, I believe just, it and does. I, and I literally just told my boy the other day, I said, bro, Spencer's gonna re- I think he's gonna request a trade. And he ended up getting injured that same Ooh. day. And the, reason, and the reason why I said that is because it's not enough balls to go around. And I'm not saying Spencer's a, sh- a selfish guy. He's not an off-the-ball type player. And on that second squad, we already know who's the man. And that's Levert. Levert came in the game the other day and scored 10. And I thought he had 20. It was like in a Lance Stevenson effect. You feel me? Like, yeah. he was the only one shooting in that second half. You feel me? Yeah. And Joe Harris is getting him up. So... Yeah, it's going. Yeah, I think that it definitely hurt. They're gonna have to find another team to bring in for that. You know, for that for that three team trade. And the thing is, is like Karis, he can drop forty. We've seen him drop 40, 50 at any moment. So Mm -hmm. I think he and uh, Spencer both deserve to start. So with that being said, I'm not surprised that the whole Spencer wanted to get a trade because he deserves to start right now, um, in my opinion. But yeah, um. Me personally, I would like, and this is no bias, I'm going to leave Miami out of it. I, I would like to see James in Philly. Like, I've been saying it for a long time. But I would, I would, I'm interested to see, like, how it looks when Clay comes back with James there and Steph. Like, I think that would be wild to see. Like, I would want to see how that works. Now, the good thing is Clay can, Clay can play off ball and Steph can. And it, it, I think it, would, it could fit better than a Kyrie or a KD. I think I would like that better than Brooklyn for him. I'd rather like go and stay with him for that. Maybe. Hey, look, I'm letting y'all know right now. If somehow James Harden end up in Golden State, just know these colors change in the gold, gold and blue. <laughs> that's pathetic. That's, hey. so pathetic. No, that's pathetic. That's pathetic. But that's I real though. I'm the only one with real loyalty around here. Hey, we talking about this, uh, the same woman that nobody knew Miami was your favorite team till oh, last no, year. They reached it. the finals. This jersey, <laughs> first of all, first of all, one of my followers bought me this jersey two years ago. Okay, I've had this for two years. When Dwayne Wade, so don't try me. Matter of fact, what do you see right here? What do you see right here? Miami, right here. Listen, stop this, okay? Listen. What I what I see is uh is 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 is, is two tradable assets on there. <laughs> no, no. You see one. We're not giving up Bam or Jimmy. Tyler can go. He can go. I'm sorry. I, That's Tyler, so crazy. Like he can go. No, listen, right, you listen, you listen, just listen. said don't listen. touch Ty. We're, I we're, I know. I know. Trying, we're trying to win. We're trying to win. I cannot sit around like Russ. I love Russ, but the Wizards aren't gonna make any ploy any noise at all. I'm sorry. 
Gallery, how do you be, continue? Gonna Joy, my bad. They're gonna, they're, they're hopefully they make the playoffs, but they're not gonna make any noise. So with that being said, Miami needs to. I need something to hold on to. Give me something, and we're not gonna make any noise with this guy turning over the ball every five seconds. I need him gone asap. Gallery, Gallery, okay. <laughs> Joy, I hate to be Joy boyfriend, cause once a nigga, <laughs> once I do something wrong, yeah, I'm out of there. You left the toilet seat up twice. You gotta go. You gotta go. Yeah, sir. You she gotta go. Right. Exactly. Yes. Gowie, how do you, do you feel that a Brooklyn Nets, Kyrie Irving led Brooklyn Nets, can win a championship? Because the one thing I do I like about KD, it doesn't matter what superstar that he teams up with. He's Gucci. You feel yeah. me? In terms of I don't I don't never see him complain. He's still able to get his shots. He's not worried about, you know, any other stats. He hasn't complained about Kyrie, even though Kyrie gets taken the bulk of the shots, but KD's percentage, they're both shooting over fifty percent. They're both they're both on pace for a uh, 40, 50, 90 year. But I don't know. I mean, as we've seen in the past, there's only been what, Tony Parker and Chauncey Billups that's been finals MVP for a point guard. Yeah. Uh, I don't, you feel me? Like, so do you feel that with Kyrie leading that team, um, if Kyrie continues to lead the team the way he d is, is doing in terms of point shot attempts, is that a great formula for long term success and into a title? Or KD is going to have to, I don't want to say step up, be like, but be like, all right, let me, this is my team, you know? Um, Truthfully, I kind of trust Kyrie more than I trust KD as far as leadership goes. Yeah, you um, understand it. Yep, leadership. Yeah, wise, yeah, yeah. Because, um, you know, KD's going to get his regardless. So mm -hmm. he's a lead by example type of guy. So I'm getting 30 points. I need the rest of y'all to try to score so we can win this game. That's the type of time KD's on. But I think this year Kyrie's really been showcasing his verbal leadership. Uh, you know, kind of cleansing the arenas with his sage before games and just talking to his guys and, you know, making peace with everything. I think he's in a better headspace as of right now. He seems more peaceful, seems more relaxed. He's kind of just going with the flow. And I really think that we may see a new Kyrie Irving. Now, when you talk about winning a championship, uh, especially with the loss of Spencer Dinwiddie, because you lose a, a great amount of your depth just with him uh, being unable to play. I think that gets tricky because one of the things that I said, and this is hypothetically speaking, if the Lakers went to the, uh, the NBA Finals, the Nets go to the NBA Finals, you're playing against, like, the decision will come between the benches. So if, with no Spencer Dinwiddie, you have a Karis LeVert coming off the bench. You have a Jared Allen coming off the bench. Um, but it's like, is that enough? Knowing that you got to go against Trez. and know you got to go against Kuzma. And then whoever else is on that roster, THT. Um, so... That's where it gets iffy. I think it really just uh, – it's, it's a bench thing at this point. So they have to really try to get that chemistry amongst their bench going to kind of still surprise people and let them know, like, they haven't taken a step back even with them would he hurt. As far as, like, the leadership, the leader question go, can he lead? I feel like he can. My only concern with Kyrie is him staying healthy because I feel like – Brooklyn as a whole, you know, Karis and, you know, now Spencer and Katie, they've all had injuries that, that could be, like, long-term. So, that being said, I feel like they can be anybody. um, Anybody. The Lakers, Miami, anybody. So, that being said, they just have to stay healthy. I feel like they have the best team in the league right now. Um, I feel like they got a good – I feel like they got good – like, a good bench, like, good shooters, defense, scores, offense, size, whatever they have it. So – um, I think Kyrie has the tools that he needs. I think he's clutch. He's a great scorer. He's a great passer. You know, he's a good floor general. I just feel like they need to stay healthy. That's pretty much it. And I feel like the rest will, like, take care of itself. Yeah. I don't, I don't – I mean, I don't think they have the best team in the league. I mean, now that Spence went down. Um, well, yeah, just, before that, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. Even, and, and then, like, they were, they were very – I mean, they were – they were a deep team, and they still are, kind yeah. of. And I don't, I don't know. I still got to go with the Lakers just because if you win a championship and then you get better in the off season with that championship, you add two top two six man candidates. You feel me? Then you add a former defensive player of the year and a and a and a, and an NBA champion in in um in Mark Gasol, and then you add a great defender and you know streaky but still can knock down a knockdown shot with uh, Wesley Matthews. 
I, I don't know, man. The Lakers, you know how it is when, when they when they're in the playoffs. Well, when LeBron is in the playoffs, yeah. <laughs> you know, he just he's able to turn it on, you know, and and figure it out. And it's a shortened season, so I think that uh, I I still got to go with the Lakers. I don't know, man. I'm just I'm just hesitant about the Nets now because Spencer went down. Like yeah. now now it's about depth, you know. Now do yeah. they now do they look to trade for you know some some pieces, um, but. I don't know. We'll see. But I still like the Lakers. Um, the Clippers. Clippers still Ooh. Gucci, man. Clippers is all. We go. Mm. Let's talk about the Clippers. The Clippers. They're they're that it's not it's it's not. It, we've never said they were a bad team. It's about it's just about finishing the job. It's about winning in the playoffs. Yeah, they got beat by fifty the other day. And I don't think that Kawhi being out, it should have been that much of a exactly. difference. Hell no. <laughs> and then Paul, and then PG, bro, you was having, you've been having a great year. Don't just say you had a bad game and leave it and leave it at that. That's all you had to say. You could have said it was my fault. That's it. Don't say it's my fault. I ain't get what I wanted for Christmas yesterday. Exactly. You feel me? Like yeah, exactly. He, it, no, it, he it, keep there's, there's always a follow-up. There's follow always up. an excuse. There's yes, always a follow-up. I take full responsibility, but there's always a but. Always. Mm -hmm. It never mm -hmm. fails. It's so annoying. Oh. Gowie, go ahead. Cause when I said the Clippers, boy, your eyes lit up and it looked like a little hair was about to grow. Hey, I look, seen man. it, bro. <laughs> that motherfucker said. Hey, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it a bean with you. Now, last year, people know that I picked the Clippers to win. Uh not well, to beat the Lakers at least. And I was like, you know, I really high on them because they have a lot of depth on their roster. They have a Kawhi Leonard who just won an NBA championship. They have two six men of the year finalists on the roster. What can go wrong? Well, everything went wrong. <laughs> and then everything that went wrong, they blamed it on chemistry. And it's like, okay, so chemistry is the issue. You get rid of Doc Rivers, whatever. Now you got Ty Lu. And then you come into this game, and once again, you know, no Kawhi Leonard because, you know, he went down in combat. I like to put it that way to make it seem more uh, aggressive, I guess. And you get blown out by 50 points, and you have a star on your team. Now, this is where I get hesitant, because it's like, I've always been big on Paul George. I always try to give him his credit as a player, because he's one of the best two-way players in the league. He can give you buckets on any given night. But it's like, at what point do we stop making excuses for him and, you know, really put the, the, the weight on his shoulders? Now, I know people say pandemic P, playoff P, they blame losses on him. But it's like when you watch a 50 point blowout to the Dallas Mavericks who don't have a uh, Chris Stapps Horzingis, uh, Luca didn't go for 60. Like he was, I'm not going to say he was contained, but he had a, you know, solid, solid game. night. Solid, yeah, just bro. a regular solid night that Luca going to put up. And these dudes lost by 50. But that wasn't the bad part. The bad part was the fact that in a game where Kawhi Leonard and Marcus Morris sat, Serge Ibaka was the player of the game with 13 points, nine rebounds. How does that happen with a star on your team, bro? Somebody let me know this. Like, you got a whole star on your team, and the player of the game is a guy that y'all just signed uh, on the back end of his career with 13 points, nine rebounds? Like, that should never be a thing. And that's why I feel like Paul George really has to tap in because, like, if he <laughs> – they're going to strip that star uh, title away from him. It don't matter if he goes to the All-Star game. they stripping it away, bro. Like, you got to step up and be that guy that the Clippers need you to be in order to win. I think PG is a – I'm sorry to put this tag on him, but I just think he's a complimentary player. I don't know – I don't think that he'll be able to lead a team with pressure on him yep. and be successful when he was with the Pacers – no pressure. He was the underdog. Whatever yeah. he did, whatever happened, you know, it wasn't going to fall on him. It was going to fall on who? Granger. Yeah, Danny and, Granger. And, you feel me? And uh, Roy Hibbert and all that. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. So when he emerged as that guy with Indiana, it wasn't no pressure. He was playing with house money. I'm going against LeBron. I done dunked on Birdman, Chris Anderson. I'm busting <laughs> LeBron ass. And we, we're damn near taking we're damn near taking this team to almost, you know, seven games. So... Mm -hmm. I think PG is just one of those. Uh, he he won't be. I don't. I don't know. I don't think he'd be able to lead a team by himself, bro. And not in the West, at least. What, what no. you gotta say, Joy? It's just annoying. Like I'm not gonna lie. Every time I see him, I just get mad because all I see is excuses. All I see. And the thing is, this loss concerned me. And it's not by how many points they got blew out by or the fact that they lost to the Mavericks. It's the fact that how it happened. Like you just sat there and took it. Like, you didn't even try to catch up. You just sat there and took it. So, that shows me y'all don't have any fight unless you're playing the Lakers. And what could happen is 
the same thing that happened last year could happen again. Mm. Okay, with the Nuggets mm. or the Mavericks, if 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 Porzingis comes back healthy, the same thing can happen. Because why do y'all not have any fight? You're three mm-hmm. games in or four games, whatever it was. You were a, a second round exit, so you had more rest. So what what's the problem? So that concerns me because I feel like the same thing could happen. Um, you know, this coming season, and we all know about the Clippers curse by now. It's a real thing. So I feel like. It was a red flag. Um, and Paul George, y'all already know how I feel about him. And I'm pretty sure if, if I'm Kawhi, I'm not coming back. <laughs> you Straight <opting> up. <laughs> if I'm Kawhi, I'm not coming back. Sorry. The one the one thing I'm not I can't really the one thing I can't really like fault on this Clippers team or the one positive thing I can really say about it is, and it's no hate on Doc Rivers, is Ty Lu is gonna hold him accountable. Mm-hmm. And the, but the the only thing about that is, are they going to take that as constructive criticism, or they're going to, or if Lou will Paul George then be like, come on, bro, we grown ass men, bro, you get on our case, because that's the one thing. What did what what did Ty Lue say to Kyrie and LeBron? Hey man, y'all just shut the fuck up. And my, my y'all can y'all can beep that out, man. Y'all just shut the hell up and let me coach. Mm-hmm. And it led to a championship. Not saying you know it was a hundred percent him. But at the end of the day, you need you you gotta have that coach who's gonna hold you accountable. Doc Rivers, he wasn't holding those players accountable to a point. When you're right. coming out the game, you just gave up a ten point lead. I'm not clapping as a coach. I'm not like we're gonna get this together. You know, this is not Rondo. This is not Paul Pierce. It's not Kevin Garnett. It's not Kendrick Perkins. It's not James Posey. It's not Eddie House. It's not that Celtics team with a whole bunch of vets that are able to hold each other accountable and be mm-hmm. like, all right, we got you, Doc. You right. You talking as you talk. We good. You don't gotta. You don't gotta get on our head. Now, Tyloo, Tyloo gonna let you know because Tyloo played with a lot of those players that's still in the court today. He's gonna let you know, like, hey, get y'all shit together, bro. I ain't, I ain't lost. I ain't never lost a fifty and fifty as a player. You mm-hmm. feel me? So, it's. I just feel like if it is the players gonna take that, you know, in a negative way or a positive way. You feel me? Are they gonna be like? All right, coach, yeah, we ain't trying to hear you, bro. All right, bro, you you get on our case, or they're gonna be like, shit, you right, bro. We gotta we gotta get this shit together. So, man, we'll see, man. I we'll mean, see. when you when you <laughs> when you don't even outscore like when the Mavericks outscore your team, your team total at the end of the game, like Mavericks put up seventy seven in the first half. That's the Clippers sad. the Clippers ended with seventy three, bro. That is. <laughs> <laughs> it really is sad. So if we talking about accountability, like you, it, there's really no way around that, bro. Like they got to take whatever Ty Lu said in that locker room. They just got to take that on the chin. Take it on the chin. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, give me. Uh, I want y'all to tell me who's y'all, who's y'all dark horse in the in the East and West. Who who? And I know it's early, but. Who's your guys' dark horse in the East and West? Joy, you started off. I'm going to say my dark horse this year is Orlando. I like that. I'm going to pick like Orlando. I feel like, ter- first of all, Terrence, t- Cro- whatever Crawford's name is, I won't call him Crawford so bad. Terrence, something. Terrence Ross. He, Terrence Ross. he Terrence Ross. is Ross. killing the, man, that, but, he looked like Clay Thompson. But that's what he do. You know, last year he was, last year, year before he was known as like, no offense to the real originator microwave. Yeah. They was comparing him to the microwave because when he come off that bench, he scores so fast. Yeah. Markel yeah, looks good. Kind of Cole Anthony looks Markel good. Markel look good. Markel look real good. Yeah, he looks that's real good. A, that's a Maryland boy for those. For All right, know. yeah, here we go. Yeah. What, what, it do, what it do, Markel? What it do? What it do, Markel? Listen, that's if, that's if, a Maryland if, boy. Gowie, how about you start claiming the trash Maryland players? I never, I never heard you claim because they don't yards. exist. They don't exist. But, oh my god! They don't. Anyways, <laughs> anyway, my West Dark Horse, I'm gonna say, um, okay, y'all probably aren't gonna expect this, but I feel like Houston could be really. I think they're gonna be better than what people think they're gonna be this season. Because I feel like a lot of, um, I feel like a lot of like the reports with James Harden and things like that um, are getting in the way of how good they can really be because I feel like they look really good. And Christian Wood looks amazing. So mm-hmm. um, I, I like that's, that's going to be my, my, my dark horse for the West. Yeah. What about you, Gally? Love to hear. Well, my Eastern dark horse will probably be the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, ah, I hate you. <laughs> I was going to pick them. I was going to pick them too. Oh, I'm sorry, but like the Atlanta Hawks, 
obviously you have a Trey Young that's going to get you 30 points on any given night, shoot the the gym, like shoot the lights out of the gym, whatever. Um, so he's going to do his thing. But I'm more impressed with the depth that they added in the offseason. You have a, a Gallinari um, on the squad. You have a Bogdanovich. You have a Rajon Rondo. And then on top of that, you still have the key guys that you had last year in Collins and Cam Reddish. So – with and Capella, team, we can't forget about Capella. Clint Capella, too. So Clint Capella has deep playoff experience. So that's another thing that you add to your squad. So I really think that the Atlanta Hawks, when they really get their chemistry going, they're going to be a problem. Um, Rajon Rondo can come into the game 15 minutes and get starter numbers, uh, whether it's 12 points, uh, 11 assists. Like The way that he's able to pretty much facilitate and really make an impact in such a short time, I think that's going to become very beneficial in the playoffs. And you for my West, hey, you already know what's going on, bro. And this, whether you whether okay, you want to okay, say it's okay. biased or not, I got to go like with the it. Houston Rockets. Um, And I felt this way with or without James Harden. I felt like the Houston Rockets will go to the playoffs. Um, I'm not going to say they're going to be a high seed, but – I feel like with the John Wall, with the DeMarcus Cousins, Christian Wood, there's a lot of depth on that team. And one thing that I've really been impressed with is the young players that's on the squad and their energy that they bring. Uh, you have uh, Jay Sean Tate. Like, he's he's pretty much oh, being coached up. Yeah. Oh, wait. That's my boy. <laughs> and he's being he's being coached up by, um you know, P.J. Tucker. So, Tucker's really showing him the ropes and how to really put his body on the line and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I what they say, the, the rookie and the vet. Like, you really just grooming these guys to become who you want them to become. With Harden, guaranteed playoffs. Without Harden, I think they just edge into there. So that would be my dark horse. I like that. Well, Atlanta Hawks for the East was my dark horse. Um, yeah, we got it. My dark horse for the West, um, I like the Pelicans, bro. Wow, they really? They're like not. The they're Pelicans. good. They're good. And, but I don't want to yeah. say in terms of winning, but I feel like they can get in the playoffs and – they can mess some stuff up, bro. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You feel me? Like, if 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 not them, then Portland. But I think Portland is just a, a a gimme in terms of dark horse. I think that's too easy of a dark horse because they have a known superstar, one of the top two guards in the league, one of the best two-way players in the league, and Rob Covington, you know. So I think I, – I, I like the Pelicans, bro. Um, seeing the growth of Brandon Ingram, seeing what Zion can do on a nightly yeah. basis – uh, Lonzo, this is his statement year, and he said it. He already said it. He's like, all right, watch what I'm going to do. And his jump shot, his, his jump shot is, 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 is good. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's not great, but it's it's good. It's, he's coming off down screen shooting. I like Eric Bledsoe in terms of he can show flashes. I don't know how consistent he's going to be, but in terms of being able to run, you know, run, run on a, run on a, run on a fast break transition, and then they have one of the most hard-nosed coaches in the history of in basketball, which is Van Gundy, and – he going he gonna to hold them boys accountable. And I like what he said. I, Zion is 20, 21. You're going to play 93 minutes. And Zion, <laughs> like, you know, Zion, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like that. No, no, don't and don't for, we can't forget about Josh Hart. We can't forget about Reddick. Like, they're deep, bro. Like, side so jack. Like, I, I, they have a chance to, to make some noise, man, to, to even possibly slide, slide in that Western – the Western Conference Finals. Man, hey, before we head out of here, man, you got anything? You got anything else, Gowie, in terms of any NBA you wanna you know wanna talk about? Same for you, Joy. Anything that we didn't you know we didn't cover that's important? Um, me personally, I feel like um the rookie of the year race is gonna be very very interesting. I like that. I like that. Um, we can we can talk about Lamelo struggles real quick. Try to keep it under yeah, seven seven ten yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, like Lamelo. Him, he struggled here and there, but he's starting to pick it back up. You got mm -hmm. Anthony Edwards, Cole Anthony, players like that. Am your I boy, your boy is doing really well. The guy that you said is the best player in the draft that you did not just name, James, James Wiseman. Wiseman. James yes. Wiseman. He, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I, I want to see him with the ball more. I want him. I want to get the ball more. He looks good, bro. and he can. He he's a he's he he's, he has good ball control and ball handling for his size. Mm -hmm. I, I I just I don't know, and I feel like. I feel like he hasn't even shown us half of what he can do yet as far as his skill set goes. So I'm excited about that. Man, I think the thing with this rookie of the year conversation, I do think it's going to be very interesting. And I think what really makes it interesting is the fact that the vets ain't going for none of that. 
Like I'm looking, I'm at looking, all. At, I'm, at looking all. <laughs> I'm looking at these rosters, and I'm like, who's going to be the one that kind of you know get edged in minutes? And I'm looking at uh, Orlando because I thought Cole Anthony was going. Yeah, I, I called Cole Anthony the biggest steal in the draft, but. You got Markel Fultz going crazy, like yeah, you thought, like you're not yeah, about you to come thought. in. They, and then, they still got Evan. They still got Fournier. Yeah, they still got yeah, Evan too. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So then you look over, you look over to New York. Julius Randle out there looking like LeBron. So it's like he facilitating mm-hmm. and all. I'm like, bro. So Obi Toppin probably not even going to get the minutes that he need to get. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. These vets not going for none of that. So it's really going to be interesting to see who's going to emerge into that conversation. And as of right now, if I had to pick somebody as a favorite, it would probably be James Wiseman simply based off the fact that he's receiving the most opportunity. That's facts. And as you talk about vets, even though these guys aren't vet vets, they still put up big numbers in the league. We're talking about the the Hornets, Mm -hmm. Terry Rozier and, you know, Deontay Graham, (laughs) you know, you know, you know, you know, Deontay should have been most improved last year. And um, like you said, Terry, they're not going for that. And that's nothing against LaMelo. It's it's, it's faulting on him because we can't we can't base these numbers um, and we can't judge him off these numbers because he's only playing 15, 20 minutes a game. Yeah. You know, these are the guys that's coming in. They're getting the bulk of the shots, not saying as they should, but they have proven, you know, that they can score. I feel like. They will use Terry as some type of trade asset. And I and the only reason why I say that, and it depends on how the Hornets are doing at that twenty to thirty game mark. Mm. Are they are are they looking to make are they have do they have a chance to make the playoffs? Or is it okay, let's put the keys in LaMelo hand. Mm. So like like Gowie said, which is a great statement, man, these vets they ain't they ain't going for it. Not saying they're you know, they're personally not getting LaMelo the ball, these guys aren't pass first guards. LaMelo is the only pass first guard on that team. Right. And 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 LaMelo, you know, he's just got to be able to finish at the basket. That jump shot's going to come, but you know, for your easy buckets to get the game going, you got to be able to finish at that bucket. And that's that's him and Lonzo's struggles. They're them not being an efficient around the basket finishing type guys. They usually get to the basket and look to dish it off. Mm-hmm. And when they do get to the basket, it's like, "All right, if my dish off, if my dish off isn't there, I'm gonna throw up some some BS. You know, Lonzo, Lonzo be right there at the bucket. All you gotta do is lay it up. Lonzo could be a a a, a good version poor man's Rondo back in the day, but now that he can shoot it, he just gotta be able to finish. Rondo is one of the best finishers in the game. You feel me? In the history of basketball, if I can say in terms of under six. 6-1 type shit. If Lonzo is able to finish, and LaMelo, they got the height, they have the athleticism, they just got to be able to do it. But, yeah, I like James Wiseman right now as, you know, our rookie of the year. And, uh, shoot, before we bounce, hey, Joe, anything grinding your gears this yeah. week or this, yeah, this month that we need to know about? Um, just the Wizards um, not appreciating <laughs> the presence of Russell Goldsbrook. I think that's what grinded my gears this freaking week, this freaking year. I've never been this mad in my life. We gonna I have promise. To take I that. almost cried, literally. I we almost to, cried today. We're going to have to take that gold off and just give him back to Westbrook. Oh, right, no. Uh, take that. Dot, take you better tell. T- no, no. no. You, know, you, know, you know I love Russ. Russ, my, Russ my, he's my top two favorite players just because – not because I love him as a player, but his video made me who I am today. If mm-hmm. I do no Russell Westbrook impersonation, <laughs> I, I'd probably be a party promoter. Yeah. Graduated from Georgia State University. Look, Russ changed change people's lives. You, you, you feel me? The GOAT. The GOAT. Gowie, what grinded your gears this week, man? Man, you know what grinded my gears. This whole James Harden talk, man. Know, Y'all know I James know. Harden is my guy, my favorite player. Uh, you know, he he's out there. You got to follow protocol, bro. We're not going to overlook that. But at the same time, let's stop acting like we don't know how James plays, bro. Like, people see him come in, a little bit of weight on him. Oh, he's out of shape. He's got, Oh, he's at the club popping by. Oh, he's a, and he and he giving you 40. Like, what is we talking about, bro? Like, what is this discussion? So, I look at James Harden as a modern-day AI. Um, a lot of people, they saw AI. AI would go to the nightclubs with the homies, pop bottles. Uh, AI would be somewhere with strippers, whatever, like... But when he stepped on that court, you knew what time it was, bro. So, you know, the extra stuff, I get it. But at the end of the day, as long as he comes onto the court and performs, that's all that matters at the end of the day. I love it. Well, uh, I know, Gary, I know you're new. You know, you're new to the show. Uh, my grind of the gears of mine is usually never sports. Um, <laughs> what grinded my gears this past two weeks? Um 
If you're not ready to be in a relationship because of past insecurities, then don't then don't be in a relationship, all right? Don't bring them past insecurities until this great thing that we got going because you feel this everything going too perfect. So you start nitpicking on some little is. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I, the streets is back calling my name. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Dot back on the <laughs> dot, dot back in the market. Dot, we're doing so well. Street sweeper of the year. <laughs> We got, we got, we got thought dot back. No, <laughs> okay, right, no, no, okay, We're okay, no, nah, no, nah, okay. Listen, I, right, I'm, I'm chilling. All right, like yeah, I, get you I, I'm, I'm, on, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. I ain't about to be back in the streets, yeah. but you know, I might, you know, I might Millie rock on the block here and there. You feel <laughs> here, me? Here and you there. You feel me? Here and there. Like, here and Joy, there. Joy, it wasn't my fault, Joy. I promise, and I know every dude say this, but I was, it came out of nowhere. I was surprised. You feel me? I was sitting there still texting like everything was all Gucci. I'm the one out of nowhere that got a text that, hey, I gave your dog to your friend. Um, I, I feel that blase, blase, da, 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 oh I'm not a top priority in your life. She did it by I, go, I, speak, I see you more than I see my kids. She did it by text though. Oh no. And Joy, oh. you know, I'm a, and you know, I'm an audio message guy, you right. know, but I, but I was with my daughter. So I had, I had to use these thumbs and I, oh, I, well, that's it for this episode of the checkup, <laughs> man. It's your main man, B dot. And this is Jordy Angela. And it's the kid, Gowie. And until next time, man, we out, man. Hey, check up, check up, <laughs> check up. <laughs>